I told you it was going to be a short pause, so finally fixed up, everything's working all right, and it looks like there are no chat issues now, so they can't hear me, all chat is not on, so for the second time, we're going into game one of a best of two series between Hammer equals Dropped and Bait Masters, and the drafting phase is starting out right now, so after pressing the correct hotkey, we're going to go right on into that, and we're waiting on the first ban out from Bait Masters, so again, Team ban. This is the game between the first and second seed of the group in the EST bracket. I believe it's the um, the Brewmaster group. Nah, I'm not quite sure, but Radiant either way, doesn't make a difference. We're going to see Batrider is going to be the first ban out. Nature's Prophet is going to be the answer to that. So we talked about in the best of two series that I casted earlier in the game, the Batrider is a very nice mid hero, is great at picking out heroes in a strong team fight and basically taking the high priority target and turning him into a couple of ashes, really. He can take out any hero with his lasso and then just burn him down with Firefly and take him into the enemy team, or take him into his ally team and they just have their way with him and can't do anything really about that initiation. Whereas, Nature's Prophet, the ultimate in Hala Hala Get Dala, he can be anywhere on the map he wants to be with that teleport. As soon as he levels it up, he can get around the map, he can force fights, make team fights, turn them from 2v2s, 1v2s into, into 3v2s, 3v1s, and ultimately secure kills where they originally were not. So aside from the Nature's Prophet, we're going to see a Timbersaw is going to be the ban out from Baitmasters, a hero that has really kind of itched his way onto the scene in recent, uh, in recent games. He's a really good hero to place in that off lane position. He finds his farm pretty easily, and really you can't do anything about him unless you have a lot of uh, stun lockdown and a lot of damage. Otherwise, he just his reactive armor comes into play. He just the more harass he takes, the more tanky he becomes essentially. And really, he's just an overall intense hero to fight against, and just a tank in all uh, in every way, shape, or form. So we're waiting on the second ban out from Hammer Equals Drop, but going back to that Timber Saw, he's a really good um a really good playmaker. And overall can turn mid-game team fights into really nothing. So and especially when you've got the Nature's Prophet on the field, once he starts initiating, you know you got the timber chain in, into the uh into the 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 Whirling Death and really everything. The Chakram, Timber Chain, Whirling Death. All that burst damage, and most of it pure. And then you've got the Nature's Prophet that can TP in and finish off the kill. It's, honestly, it's a very strong combo. It's a very strong thing to fight against. And something that you usually don't want to fight against. So, Hammer Equals dropped. Well, they ban out the Outer World Devourer, so they're not reigning true to their Ten banner. That shows the wonderful picture of the Outer World Devourer. They're instead just going to ban him out. A very strong mid hero shuts down almost every conventional mid hero, and is overall just an insanely powerful hero to fight against. He snowballs into the mid game, into the late game, and until you have a BKB, he just does a ton of damage. That Sinny's Eclipse is nothing to laugh at. As Really, it can turn a five-man push into a rampage in just a couple of seconds. So, going into the picking phase here, we see Baitmasters taking the first pick, and they decide to opt for the Weaver as their first one. And really an intensely versatile hero. He can play the off-lane position, he can play the safe lane position, he can play the mid position if you want to. It's, a, it's really a hero that scales very well with farming. He can find that farm in any any real in any place really. And with a Scoochie, he can get up right up next to the creep wave, find a couple last hits, and then get out at the first sign of aggression. In the offlane position, he can be incredibly aggressive without having to worry about too much harass being sent right back onto him, as he can just scoochie away from auto attacks and away from stuns and mostly anything. And this hero is just one of the strongest heroes to have, but if he gets shut down in the early game, he turns into nothing but a bug that you squash. Because he just, he, he's not very tanky. If you get locked down, if you get vision of him, he can be easily taken under control. And if he doesn't build damage items, he just doesn't have the impact into the mid to late game. So, Visage and Lifestealer gonna be the first picks for Hammer Equals Dropped. And if there were ever an offensive tri-lane, 
that you need to be scared of, it's this. With Grave Chill and Open Wounds, that's a slow that every hero fears. And there's just so much damage. Light Stealer is able to output a lot with Fee stacking on top of naturally high auto attack damage. Rage blocking out any counter initiation stuns. And then Visage with the Soul Assumption. The more damage that gets done to you, well you better damn well be sure that you're not sitting at low health when you're running away. Or that Visage is going to get the Soul Assumption off and it's going to be able to finish off the kill. And that's one of those things that you need to be really be careful about whenever you engage in on this offensive tri lane. So Baymasters, they realize that there's an intense offensive tri lane uh, potential from Hamrukul's drop. They go ahead and they pick up the Bane. With that Enfeeble, is not purgeable by really anything. So, you drop the Enfeeble out on the Life Stealer, and just like that, that's damage you don't have to worry about sustaining. And then, the Labane can go ahead and Nightmare any real target, and then you can't auto-attack that target for a certain amount of time. And Really, the Bane is just the cock block of the Dota world, in every way, shape, or form. Just takes off so much aggression, and is able to turn it right back around on you. With If you go on the Bane... The night, the um, the brain sap is able to just take all the damage you do to him. He's able to pull it right back, heal himself up, and then say, you know what? You didn't need that anyway. Just takes it away from you. And then with the fiend's grip, if you're caught out alone, or if you're caught out with any stuns on your side, you well, the fiend's grip is just an instant. One hero is automatically dead. So. With that pickup, that kind of soothes the aggression coming from that offensive tri -line. But still, we'll hold on to that thought. As the second banning phase is well underway, we see the Naga Siren, the end-all fun ultimate coming from her. Song of Siren blocking all damage, blocking all real movement, sending all the enemies to sleep in a certain radius. And really is great for setting up team fights, setting up any ultimates, or just getting out of a bad situation so she's going to be the ban out we're probably going to see a, um, a maybe a magnus coming out from my hammer equals drop heroes that do well versus uh enemy lineups without that sort of get out of jail free pass that the naga provides so on the side of bait masters we see the uh dark sea are going to be the first the third ban out rather and puck the really strong snowballing playmaking mid going to be banned out as the fourth ban while ta on the other side ta versus puck is sort of the the real heavy, the high priority, high profile mid matchup, and both those heroes being banned out, so neither one of them is going to come into play in this uh, in this game. To answer uh, Devaka Cinnamon, since we're in the drafting phase, I can answer questions now. But remember, it is on this stream is on a two minute delay as per Reddit Dota 2 League rules. But to answer your question. Yes, Bearju is a very good player in this league. In fact, these two teams are the top two in their bra in their uh, in their group. There are eight around eight groups in this league. Each one consisting of about six teams. So, and they are this these two teams are the first and second position. So, since I was saying that, we take a look. Zeus, the big I lightning man, is going to take the mid for hammer equals dropped and. When you talk about a hammer, and when you talk about dropping the hammer on the enemy, you better mention Zeus. This hero has an ultimate that outputs a ton of magical damage on every single hero of the enemy team. And it is nothing to laugh, about, uh, laugh at. It gives true sight. It does magical damage unless you're invisible. And all in all, it's just an insane, uh, insane ultimate to have. Alchemist is going to be the response to that. Zeus, not the most tanky hero, so if you're able to get up next to him and drop the DPS on him, Alchemist is the perfect hero to do that. Also an anti-mage, but unfortunately they decide to opt for the Alchemist, and therefore they're going to be uh, farming it up on the big man, the Greeble's Greed, the Gold Meister himself. Rubik is going to be the third, fourth pick out for Hammer Equals Drop, going to round out that offensive tri-lane, Lifestealer Rubik Visage is sort of the go-to, end-all offensive trialing to have. And you've got the telekinesis that's going to pick up and put it down Five right in place for the Grave Chill to slow him down, the open wounds to follow up, rage on the life stealer so that you can't do anything to him, you can't nightmare him, you can't enfeeble him. And then, boom, you've got one dead hero. Well, unless the nightmare comes out on the hero you're being aggressive on. And then, well, as I said, Bane, the cock block of the Dota 2 world. 
Baymasters looking for their fourth pickup, and right now they either finish up their tri lane or grab their mid hero. Hammerickles dropped, already grabbed their mid. So it's kind of it's it's sort of you go for the thing that's gonna be uh that's gonna be strong versus the Zeus, and really there are many heroes that are strong versus the Zeus, but the ones that come to mind, Pudge, uh, Magnus. Even a Storm Spirit are fairly good versus the Zeus in the mid. Any real hero that can that is a that is any a conventional mid does well versus Zeus. So we take a look at the fourth pickup for Bait Masters, and we see the Abaddon is going to materialize on the Dire team, and what a hero! Sorry, on the Radiant team, I believe I messed that up, but what a hero to grab! Reserve time. He is just, he is brand new. Remaining. Brand spanking new to the uh, captain's mode. A new hero remaining. and many teams are experimenting with him, but he is an insanely uh, hard support to fight Brilliant against. So, we're going to see the Night Stalker mid. I forgot to mention the Night Stalker, but he is a hero that does very well versus the Zeus in the mid lane. And with the Shadow Radiant Feed pickup, pick. I am not entirely sure what these lanes are going to be. In fact, I'm almost tempted to say it's going to be a Shadow Fiend, Rubik, Visage lane, Lifestealer off lane, and Zeus in the mid. But we're just going to have to wait and see. Baitmasters, they picked up the Abaddon, and that certainly is spoke in the wheels of Hammer Eagles dropped. The Clockwork is going to be the final ban out. A great initiation, but we don't have to worry about that since he is not in the pool. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. And I misspoke. Statsman Sir Rabbit Koala is always in the case. It is stick in the Reserve spoke time. of Hammer Equals Dropped. So anyway, we're going to see Viper. Going to be the final pickup for Bait Masters. And we're seeing newer uh, heroes out on every single team. Just a lot of different things coming out. And we're, I'm just excited to see how this is going to play out for both teams. As we go into Game 1 of Bait Masters. Versus Hammer equals dropped. Best of two. The first clip uh, team versus the second place team. And this is going to be a game for the ages, folks. As not only are uh, these two teams close up in the brackets, but they're also picking up heroes that we don't normally see in any of these games. So we're just waiting for the Ten final person on Hammer Equals Drop to pick up, and I believe that's Standin Levaquin. He's to pick up this his hero, and it's just going to default him. So as soon as this uh goes out, we're going to go ahead and introduce the team. So for Hammer Equals Drop, we have Levaquin, the Standin play in the Shadow Fiend, Reckoner, picking up the Rubik Dolphins on the Visage Bear Jew, playing the Life Dealer, and just so Zen picking up the Zeus. Meanwhile, on Bait Masters, we have Bang a Rang a Rang a Rang playing the Bane. Donkey Punch is gonna be playing the Weaver. P. Diddy on the Viper. Arthur Dane playing from the house of Avernus, the Aberdon. And Locke picking up the Alchemist. Game one underway. Right now, 44 seconds, 40 seconds until the start of this game. And it doesn't look like either of these teams are committing to a push into the enemy's jungle. Baymasters might be looking, yeah, they might be going for it. They go up to the top rune position. To and they're just going to wait out. So they're just going to uh, stake out the top rune here. All three heroes sitting out, grabbing a few trees. Crawling blade for that purpose. Not entirely sure what the plan is here. They see the uh, arrow coming out. So, these lanes. We have P. Diddy. The Viper is going to be taking the mid. The offensive tri lane from the Abaddon, the Bane, and the Alchemist. That's certainly something we haven't seen too often. In fact, I don't think I've seen that Battle at begins. all. Donkey Punch is going to play the Weaver in the off lane. Meanwhile, we're going to see the offensive tri lane with the Visage, the Rubik, and the Life Stealer. Anyone could have predicted that. Zeus is going to be taking up the mid lane. And we're going to see it. Shadow Fiend. Soloing the off lane or soloing the safe lane. Not something we totally see in these uh in these games. In fact, I think this is an absolute first and it may just become a last as three heroes rotating in. This could be a very difficult lane for him to fight against. I don't foresee him getting any last hits in this lane. In fact, we might see some heavy rotations coming out. He is just now realizing what he's up against, but still picks up a last hit. 
to boot, and this game, first last hits, just coming out, first and eyes, making their way onto the scene, and the game is well underway. Reckoner and Dolphins rotating into the mid lane, might be trying to go for a level 1 gank out on this Viper, and when you've got a hero like Zeus, it could amount to a lot of damage, but he does not have his bolt out, his lightning bolt just yet. Excuse me if I'm not able to uh, just get the um, the skill names right off the bat, as this is a hero I don't see uh, too often. So Shadow Fiend taking a few uh, few bits of harass, but all in all, Life Stealer and Alchemist maintaining pretty evenly in this game, and it looks like, yep. Just what I thought, the two supports are going to rotate up to the top lane to help out the Shadow Feed. It's going to be a 1v1 Weaver versus Life Stealer. So this makes a little bit more sense in this game. Defensive versus offensive, and Abaddon is going to do very well in this offensive trial lane, I believe. His skill set, which I am not too uh, familiar with, is, just, is, is great for getting a ton of damage out and sustaining a lot of damage. You put that Apothic Shield on, you grab a mist coil and boom, you've got um you've got a lot of damage that can be done to the enemy team and a lot of damage that you can pretty much sustain in this lane. So Shadowfiend still trying to find his last hits, and now with the safe uh, with a tri lane coming into him, it's gonna be a little bit easier. Meanwhile, Bear Jew might start pulling ahead of this alchemist. Who is now going to have to go against a defensive tri lane, which is not exactly what he wanted to do coming into this game. But of course, beggars can't be choosers, and just like that, we see Alchemist taking a bit of aggression, and we were talking about him. He is going to take the level one hit. And Telekinesis is out on Arthur Dane, puts the Apothic Shield out, and it looks like Visage is going to take the uh, the Apothic Shield to the face. Once that hits the threshold, it goes out and explodes out all the damage taken, and Visage was on the receiving end of that, was a little low, and he is going to take a uh, take a fall. That's a one for one. But Alchemist was the hero to go down on the side of Baitmaster, so Hammer goes dropped, taking a little bit of a, uh, a lead out because of that. But of course, a one to one is not much at three minutes into the game. We see Zeus going in onto this Viper, and he's diving way under tower. He is going to fall here. Getting a little too aggressive, and P. Diddy is going to salve right on up and go back in for some more last hits. This is something that Azus does not want to face at all in these lanes, and now Azus, just so Zen, is going to be playing from the back foot, using his Arc Lightning to grab some last hits. 2011 now on the Viper, 16 and 7, last hits on the Life Stealer. Viper is doing a very good job in the mid lane. Zeus is only 8 and 0. So Viper is very close to tripling up the Zeus in terms of last hits. The ping coming out on the bottom lane. Looking to try to farm some jungle camps. Meanwhile, Apothic Shield out on the Alchemist. Trying to absorb a little bit of harass and put that right back out on the Shadow Fiend. But all in all, not doing too much. We see the Apothic Shield finally coming to its... Uh, Come to its peak there, letting out a little burst of damage. Now Locke is taking a lot of damage, but the uh, the coil, the mist coil coming out. Now we see disruption out on the vacuum, but not amounting to much. The ping's coming out on the Weaver. It looked like the Zeus being called out. Zeus with his lightning bolt will reveal units. In fact, you drop the lightning bolt on the Weaver, he is gonna have. There's gonna be true sight on him for a short amount of time. So. If you talk about True Sight, that's the True Sight you need to get the kill on him. So we take a look. Viper still top in the charts, and CS Life Stealer though close behind with Shadow Fiend rounding out the third place position. And in this off lane, both these heroes struggling to find their last hits. But when we talk about someone in the lead, we talk about this Life Stealer who is uh, five or sorry seven last hits in the lead and four denies topping the Weaver. So, all in all, Life Stealer is doing a lot better in this offlane position. Levaquin, though, trolling the enemy a bit with his, uh, with his default sayings. And now he's sitting at 20 souls collected. His damage is topping 100. And last hitting is just going to get easier and easier. 
Viper putting a lot of harass on Just So Zen. He can use his skill sets to harass very well, but aside from that, he is a very squishy hero that once he takes a few last hits, is going to start melting. And we see in the offlane, it looks like Weaver is going to put some damage out on the Life Stealer, but it's not going to amount to much. Life Stealer still finding his last hits and still doing a very good job at it. We see Zeus rotating into the bottom lane. He's going to pick up a Haste Rune. Meanwhile, the ping is coming out on top. We see the disruption out on Reckoner, but it gets immediately taken away. The stun, Unstable Concoction, picking up an easy kill, but the Alchemist is going to take a fall for that one. And it looks like the House of Avernus is going to lose their Abaddon. And that's a two for one. Rubik does take the fall, but at what cost? That's three to three right now. Hammer equals dropped, maintaining a three to three record. Versus the Baymasters, and we take a look at the Golden XP grabs, and it's just wildly all over the place. Now, sitting 100, and both Golden XP in favor of Hammer Equals Dropped. And now P. Diddy, rotating through the jungle, is going to try to catch out the, um, the Hammer Equals Dropped crew. He's got his ping on out, going to try to contest the pull. And he's sitting way behind. We see the ping out from my Statsman, and it looks like he's going to get sighted. But just like that, Bane is going to be telekinesis out. A couple of raises and he's dead. Nothing really to say about that. Now P. Diddy taking a lot of aggression. He could find the courier right here right now though, but he does not. And it looks like Hammer Eagles drop are going to pick up a kill for nothing. As a failed gank from, uh, from Viper takes his uh, lead in the mid lane down to Zilch. But it looks like, nope, he rotated up to the mid lane um, indefinitely. Locke is going to take the mid lane after taking a bit of harass in the top lane, going down twice. He is going to go to the mid lane, default to the mid lane, but is this really a smart place for him to play? I mean, he's against a Zeus who's going to be able to output a lot of damage out on him. He does not have any points up in his Greedwell's Greed, which means he's not going to be able to catch up as easily. And it looks like Zeus dropping the ult is going to pick up the kill. Thunderous applause as Alchemist. Takes his third death in the series, and Hammer Equals Drop going two up and taking a huge advantage. Bear Jude, while the advantage is taken in the other two lanes, he's sustaining a lot. And Weaver is not a hero that uh, takes, uh, takes a matchup versus a uh, life stealer too lightly. A Weaver can easily outplay a life stealer, but we see the Infest outputting a little bit of damage, the Rage to make sure nothing gets followed up. And some Freya Harass. Costing a little bit of mana, costing a rather large cooldown, but it looks like Viper is going to go out on Dolphins. A little bit of extra damage, but the Telekinesis is going to go out. The, uh, the Sleep going down on the Rubik, but a couple of raises. And Levaquin picking up a Mega Kill Streak. The Stand-In doing very good work in this game. And this Tri-Lane going to grab up a couple of kills. Shadow Fiend is 5-0. And if there's ever a snowballing hero that you don't want to fight, it's the Shadow Fiend. He's now sitting at 130 damage at seven, uh, 9 minutes. Meanwhile, the carry on the side of uh, Baymasters, the Alchemist, is only hitting for 61. Weaver hitting for about 100. We see the pings out on the Life Stealer. It looks like three heroes rotating in for this kill. Does he see it? He does not. Hammer equals dropped. Might lose their life stealer here. In fact, they will. A couple of auto attacks, and he is done. Viper, despite taking a few deaths on the top lane, one death to be specific. He picks up another kill out in the bottom lane. Now he's going to rotate in on mid. Hopefully grab a kill on bottom. Lockie, he's going to take a kill, or a death now. His fourth in this game. And he's going to fall way behind. Albadon trying to rotate in to get that Miz Coil to keep him alive, but there's just too much burst coming out on the side of Zeus. And now he's sitting at 1300 gold. He's going to pick up his Arcane Boots rather soon. In fact, there they are, 300 gold to boot. And now he can do whatever he wants in this game. Bangarang sitting alone in the top lane. He's looking for the deny. Will he get it? Nope, he's not even going to try. By backward, getting a couple raises, clearing the, ra uh, clearing the wave and is now sitting at 150 damage, is making quick work of these towers, and in fact, making quick work of the siege creep. It's going down in a couple of seconds. It looks like Zeus, with an infested life, the donkey punch has to be really careful of this. One lightning bolt, 
plus an infest is enough to kill the donkey punch. And it will kill him rather soon. He uses this out, but it's still, he will take a fall if he's not careful. In fact, double damage out on Zeus at um, on command. This Dyer's is going to be a very difficult thing attack. to fight. With the Viper rotating in and the Abaddon. As well as uh, the, the Bane sitting behind enemy lines. They're going to go for it. And just so Zen is going to get up. He's going to get Fiends gripped out. And he's going to die in no time at all. Now Bearju is going to take a fall. As he's getting caught out in a couple of heroes. But the ultimate coming out goes through Rage. And Bearju going to take a fall here with nothing said and done. Meanwhile, Shadow Fiend trying to get a couple of auto attacks on Alchemist. is going to be successful. But it's not going to get the kill. And that's two heroes down in the bottom lane. Bait Masters scraping their way back into this game as Hand Rickles drop. Dropping now six and seven in this game. And the ultimate coming out from Arthur Gain. And he's going to go up a couple of damage. But it's going to take it right back as the tower. Dropping him low. The aggression out on the bottom tower. They want to trade the bottom tier one for, the, for their lost top tier one. But... It might not happen, as they're going to go ahead and back off. Zeus coming in to kind of prevent the aggression. He does have his ultimate out. Abaddon has already gone back to base, field up to full. He doesn't have to worry too much. Bane looks like he's still going for it, but Abaddon, uh, sorry, Zeus could easily burst him down to nothing in a very short amount of time. Ping's coming out in the bottom lane. There's four heroes grouped up on, under the Aegis of this Tier 1 tower. So all aggression coming on this Tier 1 is pretty much halted right now as Baitmasters, realizing that they can't push their luck too much, they're just going to back off. There are familiars out for the Visage, who's level 6. And Zeus has popped up his double damage rune, and is going to run out fairly soon. But he's going to run into three heroes pretty soon. And if he's not careful, Baitmasters can make a go on him. But just like that, we see the Shadow Fiend rotating in. Does have a haste rune. He's going to find out the Bane. But Bane, realizing that he's a bit out far extended. He did have vision, I believe, of that Shadow Fiend. Now Shadow Fiend going to come out on Arthur Dane. But with the haste rune, isn't going to push his luck too much. Can easily dive under tower, but not going to do so. And now, tower sitting at half health. The Alchemist going to charge his unstable concoction. Going to pick up a kill on the Rubik. Flies out. Is just enough to find the kill in. There were no heals to bring him up outside of kill threshold. And now, top tier or mid tier one doesn't go down. But Rubik is going to end up falling to make it 7-7 seven and seven at 13 and a half minutes into this game. And a zero golden XP, or zero XP lead for either team. Dyer's but gold is, is sitting attack. just short of 2,000 in the favor of hammer equals dropped. And we can attribute that to the Lifestealer farming up in the bottom lane and the Shadow Fiend farming up overall. Things coming out on the Bane. It looked like they want a double damage room being spotted out by the Abaddon. And if there's ever a hero that can dive out, it's the Abaddon. Are they going to look to go on the Zeus? An unstable concoction right here would mean a dead Zeus. He's going to go in. Is there an ult to follow up? It looks like Locke, he's going to take a lot of damage. The ult is going to follow. And then the Arc Lightning is going to pick up the kill. The Abaddon not going in behind the lines. and He's going to pop his ultimate. But not in time. Lightning Bolt hitting just before it. And a double damage pretty much wasted. Dyer's and a failed dive from the attack. Alchemist. And this is what you have to be careful attack. of with a Zeus. He just pops up so much burst damage on such a short cooldown. You think he's used up all of his skills and that he can't kill you? Well, you're going to be wrong because in a couple of seconds that Arc Lightning is going to be coming back up. In fact, 1.75 second cooldown. Six second on the lightning bolt. That that's absolutely unheard of for many heroes, and so there's just way too much burst damage. You can't underestimate this Zeus, and until you have a BKB, until you have any sort of magic resistance, maybe in the form of a hood of defiance, or even even just a cloak. I mean, you're just gonna have to worry about all that all that damage, and now with a viper strike being stolen up by a Rubik, that's a huge steal on Rubik now. And you better be sure that the next team fight is going to turn into a big issue if he gets that down on the Alchemist. 
or the ba or the uh, Weaver, or even the Viper. But now Viper gonna take a few hits from the back one. Not gonna be much. Shadow Blade to disengage. And two heroes up in the top lane looking to push. But just like that, Hammer Eagles dropped. Are sitting in the sidelines. The Vaquin and Reckoner. Now Donkey Punch has to be playing a little bit on the safe side. He can get away at a moment's notice. But there is an ultimate up for the Zeus. It has come off cooldown. Which means True Sight will is available whenever needed. And now with a regen rune spotted. This is a Zeus's wet dream right here. The regen rooming allowing him to spam out his skills almost indefinitely until he gets hit. Now Arthur Dane, he's going to take an ultimate from the Shadow Fiend. But the, uh, the borrowed time, keeping him alive for a little bit. Not enough damage to force an ult. And Zeus not going to try to ult down a kill. Bearju taking a uh, Fiend Grip, and now he's going to fall. Top tier, bottom tier one tower. Going to be traded for the mid tier one. A TPN, but it's not going to be fast enough. Joe, hold the phone. We have a Glyph being used out. But there is no other support coming in. Just like that, bomb tier one gonna fall. They're not done. They have their sights set on the Rubik, who's gonna take a fall here. He loses the Viper ultimate. That was a huge ultimate to have, and now... Alchemist gonna stun himself up. There is no counter initiation out on this team. No TP support in. In fact, are there any TPs? There are. They're not committing to a counter push. And lock, stock, and barrel. Donkey Punch P. Diddy is just looking to lock and load. God, all the lock punch on this tower and they're gonna disengage no heroes to really defend against it two heroes gonna walk in but they could have easily taken the tower in a moment's notice so bottom tier two is gonna remain standing for a short amount of time the tower advantage pretty much even no nope. mid tier one still standing for the uh dire as well as the top tier one hammer equals drop do have the tower equals uh, tower advantage but bait master is not far behind they have the kill advantage. We look at the golden XP graphs, and it's pretty much what you'd expect. The XP is sitting 1,000 in favor of Bait Masters, but the gold is sitting 1,000 in favor of Hammer Equals Dropped. So we're looking at an intensely even game coming into 18 minutes. And both teams looking to try to find that one fight that'll secure the advantage. And here it might be, Alchemist getting pretty much sandwiched between a, um, a Shadow Fiend and a, uh, a Rubik. But he's going to see both of them and he's going to disengage. The Shadow Blade, they're scouting out the jungle. They might find the Bane if they go deep enough, but they're not going to get it. And Shadow Fiend taking out jungle camp, sitting at 3,100 gold right now. Probably going to pick up either a Blink Dagger or a BKB. I would imagine BKB would be the smarter choice of the two. But three heroes. Grouping up in the bottom lane. Dyer's looking at the bottom tower. tier one tower. Levaquin charging up an ultimate. He's going to hit three. And the ultimate from Zeus is just going to make quick work of the Bane. Arthur Dane popping out his borrowed time. But is it going to be enough? Curse of the Avernus. Nope. He tries to TP out. The TP would have been smart right here, but not getting it. Although Alchemist is able to pick up a kill versus three on the Visage. And Reckoner sitting really low on top of that. Meanwhile, Viper taking out the top tier one. Zeus wants to kill. And if he's able to find the Viper before this TP ends, is he going to do it? No! Viper getting the TP out. 10 and 10 right now. We take a look at Golden XP, and Hammer Eagles Dropped is now going to try to take a lead in, in both respects. And in fact, it's sitting exactly even and now dipping just below in terms of XP for Hammer Eagles Dropped. And this game starting to shut down on the side of Bait Masters. Is there trying really hard, but we took a look at the ultimate damage. I mean, 45, 45 second cooldown, but Shadow Fiend just dropped the rock. And in all sense of the word, the hammer was dropped. And Viper picking up a kill on the Rubik at the rune. I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that. I usually have my eyes on the map, but I was taking a look at the Shadow Fiend. Just looking at the sheer amount of awesomeness that that guy just dropped down in the mid lane. But I'll keep an eye on the map now. But 
We take a look at that, and it was just, it was so much damage, and then you take into account the Zeus ult on top of that. If he had hit it right after, if he actually had hit it right before, then that would have been a three hero uh, pickup for the Shadow Fiend. But a little bit of mistiming meant that the Rubik, I'm uh, sorry, the, um, the Abaddon was able to get away, and I believe it was the Viper on top of that. With Bane reconnecting into the game, the circles being drawn on the map. I'm pretty sure that's a either ward or no go zone being drawn out. And Weaver getting dangerously close to his uh, Lincoln Sphere. He's probably going to be sitting a little bit late on that, but all said and done, he is 77 last hits, less than or about a little more than half that of the Shadow Fiend. So. He is all right in this game. Once he gets that Lincoln Sphere, it's going to be a little bit easier for him. But, I mean, we look at what the Lincoln Sphere is draw, uh, blocking, and it's not all that much. It will drop the True Sight potential of the Lightning Bolt, but Tier 1 Tower going down, and it looks like Arthur Dane is going to take all the harass, but with the Phoenix Grip coming out, the uh, Lightning Bolt to quickly block it up, and then the Ultimate coming out, but not amounting in anything. Rubik, though, stealing the Phoenix Grip. And they're able to pick up the Viper. Bane a little bit out of position. Weaver trying to get some kills in on the back line. But the Lightning Pole is already off cooldown. He needs to be a little bit careful. A one-for-one -one trade. Life Stealer for Rubik. But all in all, I favor Bait Masters. And in of the fact that they did get the Life Stealer. He is a big player in this game. But Hammerick dropped unfazed. Making their way towards the Roche Pit. Probably not going to go for it. But are just de-warding it up. So that when they're comfortable to go into the pit... They have full vision of it. And they're dropping down uh, Sentry Wars, but there are no wars on the side of Bait Masters near the pit. And the TP's coming in from the Life Stealer. Are they going to end up going to get uh, grab Roche? I wouldn't be surprised. Although lines being drawn, Camry, uh, Bait Masters know exactly what's going on. They don't even see it, but they know. No, they have a ward here. It's no! It's right outside of the range of the Sentry Ward. It looks like it should be in, but it's not. And all of the uh, Baymasters are gonna go in. The smoke is gonna be revealed. Here we go. The engagement. And everything is being dropped, but a little bit of damage on either side. Alchemist sustaining a little bit from the uh, Life Stealer, but the ultimate dropping from the Vaquin, hitting on everyone, but not doing the any, nearly any damage. Alchemist taking a fall to the kill, uh, to the death of the uh, Shadow Fiend, but. Hammerick was dropped in that engagement, losing four in a chaotic engagement. And the, to say the very least, but that's going to mean that Baymasters can probably take Roshan if they wanted to. But, actually no, they lost Alchemist, so they're not going to go for it. Instead, they're going to go for the tier 2 top, or tier 2 mid, and they're going to secure a bit of a map advantage. This tier 2 will mean that they will have dire advantage. Or they will have map. Uh, they will have tower advantage. They will have map advantage. And Valve really need to fix these uh, things because, looking at it from one angle, it doesn't show the range, but from the other angle, it does. So it's really hard to tell where it is. But I guess that's Mister Rabbit Koala telling it like it is. They did have range of that, and it was fine. They just weren't able to de ward it out just yet, and now. If Bay Masters were careful, they would have seen exactly what was going on. They're going to go ahead and de-ward that Sentry Ward out. Yep, there it goes. And all four, all five heroes on the side of Hammerigal's drop, they're going to recollect. They're going to go right back into the pit. But this time, they don't have the de-ward out. Nope, they do. And Rubek getting smart, placing it right where he needs to. But does this reveal the Sentry Ward? For some reason, I can't click on it. I can't click on the Sentry Ward. We take a look at the range. I can't tell. I really can't tell what the ranges are and how they can be revealed. Or what is revealed or what isn't. In fact, I can probably tell. No, I can't open up. Ah, man, I have to set hotkeys for that. But, all in all, Roche is going to go un well, unkilled right now. The Aegis still up for grabs in both teams. Just looking to secure their advantage in this game. Baitmaster's taking a few kills up in that fight. And now they're sitting wildly in advantage. 4k in XP, 4k in gold. And they're quite comfortable with how they are right now. But 
They always have to be careful of these team fight potentials. Of this team fight potential coming out from Hammer Eagles dropped. I mean, Levaquin with that Shadow Blade can drop in with the ult, the infest in on the Life Stealer, and you got a ton of burst damage on top of the um, on top of the Zeus ultimate. So all in all, both teams still have a very good chance of taking this game one. Speaking of which, 25 minutes in, game one of a best of two series between Hammer Equals Dropped and Bait Masters. 16 and 12 right now, and it's really turning out to be an action-packed game as both teams striving for kills. So that have been about 28 kills and 26 minutes. And a kill a minute, by all means, is the showing of a really, uh, a really strong match. And Levaquin realizes that there must be a little bit of a... Uh, a little bit of a gank coming in on he his uh, on his tail. He's gonna go in to the side. And Baymasters, they realize the smoke isn't being revealed. They see it being revealed. They know it's been revealed. They know exactly where he could very well be. But they're not gonna find him. In fact, the TP's gonna come out. He's gonna get away. In fact, I'm pretty sure they could have seen the aura coming out from that Shadow Fiend to know where he is. But the Shadow Fiend doing nothing but baiting him out. As they're now going to go into Roshan, he's dropping low. Baymasters have to know what's going on, but they're not able to get enough heroes in in time. They're just going to sack the Rosh. And the Aegis going the way of the Shadow Fiend. He's picked up his, uh, his Manta Sally. He's going to be picking up a BKB rather soon. If he decides to go for that, of course. But just like that. Abaddon going to pick up a mechanism on top of the mist coil. He's going to be able to heal up his allies quite well. And the illusion from the Abaddon spotting out the entirety of Hammer Eagle's drop. Three heroes rotated up top. And they see the pings coming out. They know where the courier is, but they have no way of getting there. Now the pings, they see the Shadow Fiend. Are they going to go on it? The mist coil dropping out on the Shadow Fiend, dropping them down to about uh, 1,000 HP. But, he's just going to be able to walk away and not have to worry too much about that. See Viper, sitting way out in the enemy's jungle, just looking to take a few camps, star play the War of Attrition right now, try to starve the Shadow Fiend as much as possible, although that really is impossible, and reduce the amount of gold income that they can grab, and Life Stealer, though, has just picked up a Basher, which is going to make him a little bit stronger in these fights. Once he starts getting Bashers out on the Weaver, it's going to be a lot harder for the Weaver to stay alive in the fights. As a Bash means more time for the enemy to capitalize on that Bash. And when you've got a hero like Shadow Fiend, who is doing 210 damage on top of an armor reduction from Presence of the Dark Lord, that's a 6 armor reduction and a 900 radiance, that um, Weaver is going to drop so low, I mean, Weaver's main uh, main strength is his uh, armor. And once that starts getting lower, you've got, a, you've got a hero that just doesn't fare well with damage. I mean, okay, main strength is armor and flexibility. Armor and um, mobility. And when you take out the mobility with the Basher, when you take out the armor with Presence of the Dark Lord, you've got a hero that is essentially just a, 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 a I don't even have a, an analogy for that he is a siege creature something that can do a lot of damage but just goes down really fast and just like that we see uh, Rubik is gonna take a quick fall meanwhile Shadow Fiend with an infested uh, Naix he's gonna go in he's gonna find the alchemist there's gonna be nothing this alchemist can do versus this Prob Charging up his uh, ultimate, it's just, it's too much damage. The Alchemist is going to drop really fast in the Rec Room of Souls, making that totally possible. With the Alchemist falling down and falling behind, he does have a Battle Fury. Not sure if I totally agree with that decision, but it's able to, it's allowing him to farm up really fast, and in the absence of a Hand of Midas, it's going to mean... That he's going to be able to farm up a little bit faster than average. But I imagine a Basher would have been a much better option on him. As he would be able to take out the Lifesteal with a little bit of ease. And 
Maybe take out the Shadow Fiend with a little bit more ease, but Shadow Fiend has picked up his Eagle Song. He's going for a uh, butterfly. And if there's one thing that you do not want, it's to have to buy a Monkey King bar when you're starved for gold. <gasps> the Shadow Fiend, already tanky as it is. I mean, 1300 gold, not a lot, but 17 armor. And it's only going to get greater as the Battle Fury comes to fruition. And that's going to mean that it's on top of doing little to no damage on this hero, he's going to be dodging out 35% of your hits. Alchemist rotating onto the bottom lane. He's got his plate mail as well as the other two components of his uh, Assault Kiras. All he needs is a Hyperstone, but he's going to have that right now. Greebles Greed, just meaning he's getting so much gold. And Alchemist does a very good job at just coming and playing from behind. I mean, the ideal situation for an Alchemist is getting ahead and staying ahead. But playing from behind is totally possible. He's one of those heroes that carries really hard. And I mean, versus a um, Shadow Fiend, who's sort of a mid or to mid late game carry, the Alchemist will out carry the Shadow Fiend eventually. Unfortunately, you got the Shadow Fiend paired with the Life Stealer. But to balance that out, it's an Alchemist paired with a Weaver. So, Shadow Fiend and Life Stealer are sort of the heroes that are very scary in the mid to late game. But once that Assault Kiras comes out on the Alchemist, team fights are going to be a little bit harder. And now the Aegis is going to be reclaimed in about a minute. The next team fight is going to happen around that time. And Hamrukel's drop need to have perfect execution for this to work. I'm thinking a Pipe of Insight right now would be absolutely amazing for this team. Grab a Pipe on top of the mech, and then you've got a little bit of extra le uh, leeway in these fights. The double damage, though, is going to be spotted out by neither team, but it is going to become a, a, uh, a thing in the bottom rune spot. And the hero to pick this up is going to be a huge player in this next fight. But neither team have spotted it just yet. This would be a rune that would go amazing on lock. In fact, he's going to spot it out right now. But not Zeus is going to go ahead and bottle it up. So, no, is he going to grab it? Alchemist isn't even making a go for it. He's going to ping it out. A Shadow Fiend with a double damage would be absolutely scary. And it looks like that's exactly what's going to happen. Shadow Fiend taking the long way around to make sure that there's no one able to steal it. And Weaver, he's going to go in. He's going to grab it. He did grab it. He's got a double damage rune. And now Shadow Fiend is back behind enemy lines. He's charging up his ultimate. But he knows Weaver isn't going to come up to the top lane. Or up this, uh, up this high ground. And not going to go for it. The double damage plus a Desolator on the Weaver. Bane. Doesn't have too much right now, but does have does have his arcane boost. He picks up a blink dagger. So blink dagger on the bane right now. Abaddon got boots, got mech, and is picking up a ring of Basilius. Locke has his assault in 2,600 gold. I would be surprised if he didn't go for a BKB at this point. I mean, even a basher would work really well on him. Right now, Levaquin is sitting on 4,100 gold. Is going to be picking up his butterfly really soon if that's what he's going to end up going for. Meanwhile, P Diddy. Got an Aghanim Scepter, gonna make his ultimate pop up on an intensely low cooldown, and just like that, we see the ultimate gonna be used against him. And now, with a Telekinesis, with a familiar stun, with a Soul Assumption, and this, this, this is a dead Viper. No! Nope, yep, ultimate coming down. Alchemist, though, picking up Shadow Fiend, but Shadow Fiend picking up the Bane in the bottom lane as that was happening. So, two for one, or in favor of Hamu who's dropped. But. The Shadow Fiend does take a fall. And that's the hero that you don't want to lose. He is the uh, XP. He does have the most XP. He's level 19. He probably has the most gold on your team. In fact, a lot of that was probably uh, unreliable. But he does pick up the rest of his Butterfly. And with 1300 gold to boot, it's probably going to start working towards a BKB. I've said it like 60 times now, but it's never been correct. Now, Alchemist running alone in the bottom lane. Arc Lightning doing a little bit of harass. 
He's probably gonna charge up his unstable concoction right about now. They can go in whenever they want to. Get a multiple hero stun. And it looks like Alchemist is just doing, making quick work of this lane. And Bane blinking up. If they had caught that uh, life stealer, that would have been a dead life stealer. And that would have been a huge advantage to take on the side of Bait Masters. The life stealer sitting on his a uh, his Iron Man Mordigian. And his basher is going to be a little bit strong in these fights, but with the alchemist starting to get Dyer's really, really scary, it's going to get harder and harder. He's picking up, he's got 5,000 gold. The alchemist got 5,000 gold. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what he's going to pick up right now. What do you pick up when you've got 5,000 gold? Do you pick up a BKB? Probably. Do you pick up a basher? More likely, Abyssal Blade probably is going to happen. In fact, an Abyssal Blade would be absolutely amazing on this Alchemist. Give him extra strength, extra damage, and a very nice uh, bash to boot. In fact, Abyssal Blade's bash is siding on Broken, as it has an active that bashes indefinitely. Well, not indefinitely, but that bashes through BKB, through all magic immunity, and then bash procs that last for about a second each. So Roshan, the timer going down, and Roshan, the big man, making his reappearance into this game. Still sitting only on Aegis, but both teams got the timing perfect. They are now grouping up around the Roche pit. And it looks like Shadowfiend going to be spotted. Presence of the Dark Lord going to come out. And the charge going to be started, started up by Alchemist. But he's going to go down. But Shadowfiend not looking to make it, uh, make it a play on this. As Lock, 9 seconds on his ultimate. He is sitting 7 out of gold away from the Abyssal. So it looks like he is going for Abyssal Blade. And the big man taking some, uh, taking some heat. But going down relatively uh, slowly. Now Abaddon looks to be leading the charge, and in fact, he's the perfect hero to do so. Put down, uh, put down your Apothic Shield, and you can just go running right in. And Fest did a uh, Life Stealer out on the Shadow Fiend. No Blink Dagger for an initiation. And it looks like Bait Masters are going to get rid of all vision. Reckoner, or Reckoner is going to take a, uh, a little bit of damage, but the charge, the ultimate being charged up. Requiem of Souls doing amazing damage. I would imagine a time lapse would have been smart there, but Life Stealer, sorry, the, the Fiend's Grip coming out on the Life Stealer, but the, 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 there's so much going on. The Alchemist just bursting down the Life Stealer. The uh, look like the Basher doing great work in the stun, coming out trying to manta it out, but not going to happen. Ultra kill on the Alchemist. One hero left alive, but it is only. Visage staying alive and now Visage, I'm sorry Shadowfiend, buy back in this game. I'm totally tongue twisted in this game. Two buybacks used. And they're just going right in for the tower. And it looks like there is no Requiem of Souls, but a couple of raises out. A stun going out on the Shadowfiend and Lock is gonna take a day is gonna take a hit. No! So much damage! He does take a fall, but not after taking out the life stealer. And now Visage taking a kill. And Levaquin. It's gonna take a ton of heat from this, uh, from the, uh, from the Viper. Telkinis now on the wrong hero, and Rubik is gonna take a fall here. So 25 and 18 would seem to be a huge advantage for Hammer Eagles drop. Has now turned into Baymaster controlling this game, and no buyback on the life stealer. 37 seconds. That's gonna be definitely be racks, and maybe even bottom lane racks. Viper taking a bit of heat. And he's actually probably going to take a fall here. The uh, Nightmare finishing up, making sure that the stun does not come out on the uh, on the Shadow Fiend. But it looked like, no, Shadow Fiend taking Abyssal Blade to the face. He's going to go down 80 seconds without buyback. And bottom tier one, tier three rather, is going to take a fall. And this is most certainly going to be bottom racks. Two sets of racks most certainly going to be down. Can Baymasters take this game despite a nearly almost dead even early game? And I'm thinking it's theirs. They charge at the stun. Feeds gripped out onto whoever it was. And 
Bearju taking way too much damage. I would imagine the GG is being called. There they go. Game one. Going to bait masters. Hammer equals drop. Not able to keep the uh, keep the ball rolling. And with the ancient falling in a couple of seconds, we can really attribute this game to the sheer amount of late game potential coming out from bait masters. As hammer equals drop, having a great early game, a great mid game as we'd expected to. But as soon as the abyssal blade comes out on the uh, on the alchemist, it just was not enough to follow up with and. With the Assault Kiraz basically nullifying Presence of the Dark Lord, and we noted how Lifestealer did very well until armor was uh, bought up on the enemy team, and that's exactly what happened. The Assault Kiraz came out on the Alchemist, and then all of a sudden, Hammer equals dropped, having a lot of trouble in these fights. So, Game 1, going the way of Bait Masters, we're going to go on to Game 2, coming up next.